812, we're with psychotherapist and relationship expert, Kimberly Moffitt. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, Welcome thanks. to Vancouver. Awesome. Nice, nice and you. warm. Yes, it's so nice here. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. And you've been doing a university uh, speaking tour across the country, UBC yesterday. You're That's off to right. Alberta, right? Yes, we are. And we're focusing on detoxifying, but you're not talking about green juice and eat less sugar and no gluten <laughs> and all that. very Vancouver. Very Vancouver. <laughs> very. You're talking more uh, broad strokes and bigger terms for, in particular, university students who might have some toxicity on their social media and their fridge and their medicine cabinet and such. Exactly, yeah, and I think breakups can be such a good thing if they're in the right context. And if we can get used to the idea of breaking up with things emotionally, we can actually have a much better life. So we're talking to millennials about how they can break up with relationships that aren't working for them, whether it's a bad friend or a relationship, um, or if it's just something small, like their closet and clothes that they're never gonna wear again, just having that emotional and mental relief from some of those things weighing them down. Let's Let's talk about the cyber side of things first and foremost because I think people do even in toxic situations where they've got someone who treats them poorly or says things they don't agree with or even need to hide they still mm -hmm. don't unfriend or stop following them definitely and about a third of social about a third of Millennials say that they'd actually consider breaking up with social media altogether Completely. and I think that's a huge stat I mean I don't think I could break up with social media altogether even at my age but I think that it, it just goes to show that that environment can actually be really toxic if we're reading a lot of messages that aren't positive for our health. So the first thing they should emotions. do is? Yes. I think you've got to filter that whole environment for yourself. So on Facebook, you don't want to defriend people necessarily because uh, they might know that you've defriended them, but you can definitely block them from your feeds. Go into your email and perhaps delete all of those subscriptions that you don't even read that are clogging your inbox every morning. And I think even by doing a couple of small things like that, it actually clears us up a little bit mentally so that we're not kind of worried or seeing seeing updates that we don't really want to see or seeing our ex-boyfriend who's doing something or dating somebody else. Right. Don't cruise their profile no, and hurt yourself healthy. if it makes you feel bad. Stop doing it. So uh, detoxifying, decluttering, removing the negative, that applies to your fridge. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think everyone should do a little bit of a house cleanse. I kind of go around and look around and see what's working for you and what's not. So going into your fridge, and I think there's a lot of foods in there that are kind of weighing us down. So just take them out of there. Maybe, you know, you're drinking too much pop or alcohol this year and you want to replace that with water or some juices. That's always possible. Positive. Your closet's a big one as well, so kind of chucking everything that's not going to work for you. But we have these emotional attachments to things that are not working. Right. Medicine that sweater you've not worn too. in nine years, do you think, I might? Exactly. I wore that when so-and-so asked me out for the first time, sentimental stuff, purge. Exactly, right. exactly. And yeah, medicine cabinet is a big one too. I think that kind of represents our overall health. So it's like, what what are we, it gives us clues also as to what's working and what's not. So one of the hot topics yesterday at UBC was that 70% of millennial women would consider breaking up with their birth control pill in favor of something more long acting like an IUS. And I think that just speaks to how millennials want to automate things. They want to just get rid of anything that you're kind of doing, one more thing on your to-do list. and make sure that everything is kind of automated so that you have that fresh out outlook on life. Fascinating. Getting yeah. everything up to date and being smart about it. And if you've got a good foundation to jump off from, things might be more positive Absolutely. moving forward. What's the biggest mistake we make in uh, having that toxicity as a, not we, but the millennial, like that that generation. So many people say, oh, millennials, they're so entitled. They're so da da da. <laughs> These are the next generation of world leaders. Absolutely. I think all of us, whether millennials or other demographics, are so, we get so emotionally attached to things that we are currently in relationships with, and we also have a lot of fear about change and about what things would look like if we make a mistake. Right? We, we wonder if we're going to regret that. Right. And so it's important to kind of get comfortable with that idea and, um, and know that change actually is positive if it's in the right context. Leap and the net will appear. I love that. I agree. Thank you, Kimberly Thank you. Moffitt. We appreciate you coming in today. It's 817. Let's check in with Thor.